let's talk about one more. Let's talk about the fix it button. Ah, yes. The fix it button often goes along with the control button. Um, so parents might very well have both of those. Um, the fix it button means that, and it also goes along with the responsibility button because if I am a fixer, that means I am taking responsibility for you, my child. Of course, we have, we have responsibility for our children, but we do not, it is, we are not responsible for our children's feelings. We're not responsible for our children's thoughts. We are not responsible even for our children's behavior. We are, however, 100% responsible for every word that comes out of our mouth and every behavior we do. And it's the interaction with what I, as a parent, am putting out that my child responds to. So the fix it button means that if my child is having a lot of meltdowns, that if my child is really upset about this or that, that if my child is getting teased at school, bullied at school, if my child is doing poorly on homework or a test, if my child, anything is going on with my child, then I'm gonna get in there and I'm going to fix it. And, I don't know if everybody in your listening audience knows about the, the college scandal mm -hmm. that we went through this past spring, right? Those are the ultimate fixers, right? If you've got the money, you're gonna use money to fix your child's problem, to get your child in the best school. If you don't have money, you're going to use yourself. You're going to be the one who goes to the teacher. You're going to be the one who calls the bully's parent. You're going to be the one who uh, asks the, the teacher for a better grade for your child. You're going to be the one also what goes along with the fix it button is a punisher because when you punish, when you use consequences, which is I'm going to take your phone, you go sit and time out, you're grounded, all of that, it's another way of fixing. Mm -hmm. Because you're thinking, if I do this, you're going to be fixed, you're not going to do that again, mm -hmm. right? If I slap you, if I hit you, that means you're not going to do that again. So I am fixing the situation. So it's not only doing what we think of as these wonderful things for our children, but the problem with all this fixing is, again, lack of trust. The message is you can't trust your child to take care of anything on their own without you. And also the fixer is a, is a director. I'm telling you what to do all the time. Mm -hmm. You need to do this. You need to say this. You need to get this done. You need to do that. You, you need, you need, you need. Mm -hmm. So we're directing, we're telling, we're controlling. We are thinking that we're doing the very best for our children. And in fact, we're doing the very worst because our children are not learning how to think for themselves. They're not learning how to listen to their own bodies when they're cold or hot or hungry or full. They're not learning how to solve their own problems. And problem solving is the most important skill we can learn as parents so we can use with our children so that they're they're solving their problems we're solving together a problem we have rather than i'm telling you what has to be done so i wanted us to be able to take an example um, of a live scenario with a parent and really help them take a step back 
team from in the village. So I'd like to read that out to you if it's okay. Okay. So I have two daughters that are about two years apart in age. My husband and I work relatively long hours, and so family time is precious to us. My relationship with my older daughter is strained, however. She is always whining and complaining, and when she doesn't get her way, all hell breaks loose. She will lock herself in the bathroom and scream and scream. Instead of joy enjoying family time, I dread it, as she can be so difficult. I'm at my wit's end, and I don't know what to do. When I was a child, I would never even has allowed her to think she can get away with behaving like a little brat. I don't know where to start. <laughs> There's the assumption. What was the last thing? I don't know where to start to fix this. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we need another two hours. Here. <laughs> First of all, I don't know how old this child is. That would help, but the fact that she's thinking that her daughter thinks she can get away with behaving like a little brat. Look at there, right? That's it. That's the key right there. She's a brat. She thinks she can get away with behaving like that. She is, this mother has the, the fears, the judgments, the criticism. The, all of that, the catastrophizing, everything is all wrapped up into that. Now, I, I absolutely want to say that we all do this. It's not, it's not the poor parents. It's not the bad parents who do this. We, want, we all have the best intentions for our kids. And that's why it's so important to just stop and say, because this mother obviously is at her wit's end. She doesn't want to be having this kind of relationship with her daughter. So it's stopping and realizing that she is perceiving her daughter's behavior in a particular way that is not necessarily the truth, mm. right? That's where you start. You've got to say, is this the truth? Is she a brat? Mm. And, you know, something like, is he really mean after he's done something horrible to another child? It's hard to say, oh, no, that's not the truth. But if you have a hard time, I would suggest going to your reaction and saying, did I like my reaction? If I didn't like my reaction, then what do I do about the emotions that I felt that caused my reaction? And if I want to change my emotions, I can't just decide to feel differently. I have to go back to my assumptions. So is it the truth that she thinks she's getting away with behaving like a brat? And hopefully this mother, when you really break it down like that, can say, no, that's not the truth. That's what it feels like to me. That's what it seems like to me. That's what I am thinking. For the daughter, it's important to know that your child's behavior is a signal only. It's not, it's, see, we don't understand behavior in our culture. We think of it as something that is either rewarded or punished. And if we reward, if we like it, we reward it, and that will make it keep going. And if we don't like it, we punish it, and that will eliminate it. Well, that's just absurd when you really think about it. As Jane Nelson of Positive Parenting said, why is it that we think that if we want our children to do better, we first have to make them feel worse? It's just, ugh. So, 
so it's it's realizing like i did with my daughter she wasn't out to get me she's miserable this little girl is crying out for for yes for attention and we always say ah oh, she's just doing that for attention but it's what is it that needs attending mm -hmm. And we, it's our job as parents. Our children don't know. And how often do we say, what's the matter? Yeah. Why are you so angry? Why won't you listen to me? What's going on with you? Oh, my God, they don't know. Most adults don't know what's going <laughs> on. Something. How can these little children know what's going on? So take all of those questions. What's wrong? What, what are you feeling? Why are you angry? Why are you upset? Just eliminate those questions from your language database, just out and just validate. And if you have not a clue what's going on, you can just say, you're really upset. You're having a really hard time. And what you have to do then is let go of the idea that your button is being pushed because of your child. Mm -hmm. Your button is being pushed because of what you're telling yourself. But in the moment, it's, it's, a, it's a process because in the moment, at least initially, you're probably not going to be able to do anything different. Mm. So what I recommend to parents is after the situation is over, as soon as you can, get to a piece of paper and a pencil and write down the behavior, write down how you reacted, write down what emotions you were feeling because that's parts easy mm -hmm. then ask yourself if i felt this way if i behaved this way what must i have been thinking mm -hmm. and then you write down how does she think she can get away with being such a brat mm -hmm. is that really what she is doing is she on purpose behaving like a brat or is her behavior signaling something mm. that i need to pay attention to she might be feeling powerless she might be feeling rushed she might be feeling unaccepted she might be feeling unheard she might be feeling jealous any number of things is what's causing mm -hmm. that behavior. So I've got to pay attention to that, not the behavior. Mm -hmm. The behavior, much of the behavior, we can completely let go of. Because once the need is addressed, the behavior is going to go away. But that. we've got to get on board with that. So I love that bunny. Um, I think it really is a clear step for parents, um, irrespective of what their individual situation is. I love the, the journaling, the note taking, because I think sometimes when, when you do get that clarity and you write and it pours out of you, you can then see the trend and you can see yourself in a clearer way than you can when you're in the heat of the moment. Um, yes. So I absolutely love that. I want to end um, with one one more question. And I think for me, I fell into this trap and I want to make sure anybody else, I had a greater sense of awareness. I felt like now I know better, I should instantly do better. And of course, I don't have to tell you, it didn't come instantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when it didn't come instantly, it was replaced, that gaping hole was filled with guilt. Like I know better and I should have done better. Yeah. And, and I, so I just wanted you to just touch on 
what that learning process looks like. So none of our parents walk away from today's interview with a new level of awareness. Right, thinking they're going to be able to just turn this around, right? Well, just remember, I had a master's degree in early childhood development. <laughs> I was teaching parents communication skills, and I was screaming at my daughter. So believe me, I know. So the thing, the thing is, your awareness raising is right now, you've just raised your awareness, right? How many years of experience has gone into teaching you what you believe about yourself and, and those beliefs driving the choices you make, right? So just because you have an aha moment, <laughs> does not mean you're going to suddenly be perfect and that there's something direly wrong with you if you're not. So absolutely give yourself a huge break as you should give your children when you tell them what you want them to do or not do. And it doesn't happen right away. They need years of cumulative understanding and positive feedback to feel good about themselves so they can grow and mature into the behavior you're expecting. You need to give yourself that break and almost go backwards in time and realize that as a little child, you learned an awful lot of unhelpful stuff about yourself. You have beliefs about yourself that you believe are true that aren't. They just aren't. But it's those beliefs that get triggered that cause you to react. So please don't expect that to suddenly disappear. So that's why I say you're not going to be able to do this in the moment yet. That's why it's so important to do the work. Write it down, write it down, write it down. My workbook has a, has a form at the end of it where you can just go right through the, you know, the assumptions, the expectations, the beliefs, the reframed assumptions, the readjusted expectations, all of that. And it takes work to rethink how you were brought up, you know, first of all, to become aware of how you were brought up. And it doesn't mean you have to go into years of therapy, but it does mean it takes a lot of consciousness. I also say consciousness, raising your consciousness is like a dimmer switch. You don't turn it on or turn it off. You're moving it up that little, just little bit by little bit by little bit. Think baby steps because when we think, oh my God, I've got to completely change the way I'm parenting. Everything's got to be different. Nobody's going to do that. Yeah. But first of all, you're not going to the opposite end of the pendulum. You're, you're aiming for the middle where there's balance. And then it's little tiny baby steps to that. But eventually, when you start becoming a little more aware, then when you're in the moment, the most important thing to do is stop yourself from reacting. So at least you can, you know what you're tempted to do and say, just stop, just stop and breathe. Really just, if you can do inhale and exhale at least three times, mm -hmm. if you can do it more, if you can give yourself time, nothing good is accomplished when you and your child are emotionally flooded. Mm -hmm. Nothing. 
at the very best, you are completely ineffective. <laughs> and that's at the very best. So wait, nothing's going to go away. You know, we have this impulse. If I don't teach her a lesson right this minute, but we've got to wait and wait until all emotions are cleared. And this is the brain stuff. This is the, the, the hormones that are released. And when the amygdala is flooded with emotion, the cortex is completely offline. You cannot reason. You certainly cannot expect your child to reason. And we're always, don't you remember when I told you, you promised this, this, all this reasoning we do. Forget it. Just drop it. Do nothing. Then, when everybody's back in their thinking brain, that's the time to do a do-over. Mm. That's the time to say, remember when this happened, and I don't like the way I reacted at all. Mm. I reacted out of anger and fear, and I said things that I didn't mean, and I just don't like how I did that. And here's what I wish I had said. Mm. Beautiful. What a repair. What a repair that is. And then if your child has been at you, you might. I've had parents say this to their child. And almost always they say, my child just threw his arms around me and Aww. said, I love you, mommy. And then you can say, is there anything you wish you had said or done differently? Mm -hmm. This is the moment when everybody wants to make amends. Mm -hmm. You know, your child doesn't want to behave badly. Your child doesn't want to scream and yell at you. Your That's exactly the same kind of reaction we have when we're triggered, when we feel hurt. It's an animal instinct. We get attacked we retaliate. That's what animals do, mm. right? We are all animals. But the difference between human beings is that we have self-consciousness, we have self-awareness, and we can change that. So just stop and wait and let it all die down. And then, you know, you can say that, I wish I had behaved differently. You can say, remember when you were so upset because I wouldn't do such and such. I wonder what was going on and I wonder if we can figure it out now. Mm. You know, it's just, then you go into problem solving. That's beautiful, Bonnie. Before we wrap up, I wanted you to tell everyone where they can find out more about your work. Okay, so uh, bonnieharris.com is my website. Uh, you can sign up for my newsletter, and I send out articles and answers to readers' questions. And uh, I have a very um, interesting communicative uh, Facebook page, mm. which is Bonnie Harris Connective Parenting. Lots and lots of interesting stuff there. I post articles that I like. I ask questions. You know, we get into really interesting discussions. Um, on my website are my two books, which are also available in audio. And there is also what I highly recommend based on our talk today is my audio seminar of When Your Kids Push Your Buttons. And that is actually 12 hours of audio and me working with different people who are doing that class with me. Of course, you can listen to it for five minutes or two hours, whatever you have the time for. It comes with a workbook, a downloadable workbook. And, you know, I recommend that everybody print that out. It's a 45-page workbook. Mm -hmm. And you follow along and you put the principles into your own situations. Mm -hmm. The seminar also comes with two half-price sessions with me. Uh, so you can go over that the work with me when you get struggling. And it takes you into 
the expectations you hold, the assumptions you make, the beliefs that come from your background, all and lots and lots of information as well as exercises. And I also do counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling anywhere in the world as long as our time zones work out. <laughs> and, um, that I, I start off with the free half hour console. So people can ask me about that. And my email is bh at bonnieharris.com. So interested in any part of this, just email me and ask me questions or what you'd like, what you'd like to do further. Perfect, Bonnie. And I'll leave all those links um, in the video description below so everybody can get access to them. As we wrap up, Bonnie, I just wanted to ask, what does it mean to you to live an empowered life? Oh, boy. It really means feeling good about myself. It, it means, and, and, and it means not taking things personally, having really strong boundaries, which means I, I know what my responsibilities are and I know what your responsibilities are and they don't get enmeshed. You know, uh, it, it means feeling confident. Mm -hmm. And I think that confidence above all is the most important thing we can imbue our children with. No matter what, no matter what's going on with them or in their lives, if they feel confident, they can do anything. Anything they want, and that's up to us in our support, not in our doing to get them doing what we want them to do, but in our support of who they are. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Bunny. It was amazing. Well, I really appreciate this, and you're a terrific interviewer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed working with you.